hear you breathe, but I can't see if you're right here next to me. We're, you're in for a treat today because we want to start the first 15 minutes of class with somebody who has inspired me. And she's here to talk to you. She did not want me to introduce her. She's going to do that herself. So please join me in welcoming Kathleen to our class. So before I begin, I just want to thank Sujata again for having me come. I'm really happy to be here. Uh, I was in your shoes not too long ago. Um, I'm a recent graduate from the BCom here, and uh, I did a triple concentration in finance, marketing, and information systems. I'm a for former uh, Canadian television and film actress. Um, so prior to me coming here to McGill, uh, my formation was really in, in the arts. Uh, which can explain why I decided to do something that was more wholesome uh, in, in terms of my education with uh, triple concentration. And um, other than that, I'm an incoming management consultant. Yeah, so that's a little bit about me. And the article that I want to talk to you a little bit more about is an article that I wrote for Forbes called uh, Le uh, Leadership Lessons from the Theater. And it's about how in business leadership we can take a lot from actors and uh, any other body of knowledge. So I brought a book here, um, which has also inspired me. It's called Investing, The Last Liberal Arts by Robert Hastrom. Um, and Robert Hastrom talks about um, Charlie Munger, who is the investment partner of Warren Buffett. And he is also the vice president of Berkshire Hathaway, uh, which is how Warren Buffett makes his money. <laughs> and, uh, Charlie Munger believes in worldly wisdom. Mm -hmm. Now for you to be a very good investor and to understand finance, you pretty, ha pretty much have to be well versed in every other type of body of knowledge, whether it's physics, uh, biology, um, he talks about psychology, sociology, and by you understanding other types of, of disciplines, you'll be better off. And you know, here at the VCOM, I think we try to laugh at other disciplines like, oh, art, that's arts and farts, like, I'm not going to get a job if I study English literature, right? And um, I'm here to tell you that just like Robert Hackstrom, that's not true. Um, if you want to be good in finance, you need to understand uh, and take away from other disciplines for you to connect the dots. And that's not even in finance, it's, that's just in business because it's connected to everything. Every, every other body of knowledge is connected. And the better, and the more you understand how to connect the dots, the better you will be. Um, so today I'll be giving you three lessons that I've come up with from actors and how you can become a better business leader through those three lessons. So the first thing that actors learn is internalization. You don't, you have to be a leader, you don't act like a leader. Mm. So what does that mean? Um, an actor's worst job is when they are caught acting. So for example, it was my sweet 16 and I remember being on set and I had to, I was told that I had to cry because the, the scene was a crying scene where my on-screen boyfriend had to break up with me. And I recall being really happy, like I didn't really want to cry on my birthday. Um, so the, the director said, okay Kathleen, happy birthday, we're gonna like sing happy birthday, the, the birthday cake's here, but we have to, we, you know, we're on a tight schedule, Kathleen, so we're gonna, we're gonna cut the cake later, and you have one minute to cry, so we're gonna do the crying scene now, um, you have a minute while take, and three, two, one, when you're ready. <laughs> okay, go. And I, I was expected to cry. And I didn't really connect with the lines, uh, or with an on-screen boyfriend breaking up with me, I was actually really happy that I, I wouldn't have to kiss this person 20 times a day anymore. Um, <laughs> so I had to really think about a time that made me sad enough to cry. Um, so in, the, in that one minute, I thought about the time that, my, that I had first learned my grandmother had passed away. And I just began to cry and replace the, the emotion, or at least the lines in my head, mm. with, with something that was real to me. In business, we have to do the same. So if you're a CEO, or if you're a manager, or if you're a consultant, and you have to show up and you have to connect with uh, people or say things that will lead you to, to get the investment that you need, for example, um, you need to be able to bring that emotion. How many people here are extroverts? Right here, I'm an extrovert. Okay, so is most of class an introvert then? Okay, so for your, if you're an introvert, raise your hand. 
Okay, we're, we're mostly introverts here. That's cool. Um, there will be times when you will have to address large crowds and be an extrovert. You can't act like an extrovert. You have to be one in that moment in time. So for you to do that, you're going to have to think of a time when you were brave enough to address a crowd, when you had courage, um, and replace that emotion for you to get the job done. That's why we're here. That's why we study business, right? Um, so it's learning from actors to be able to bring that emotion and do what you need to do to be successful. That's lesson number one. The second lesson I have for you is um, emotional intelligence. I think e IQ is something we value so much because it's quantifiable, and EQ is something we laugh at. We just think, oh, emotions, who needs those? We're going to just ignore them. That's not true. That's definitely not true, especially in investment making. You have to be extremely tough skinned and know how to control your emotions. Not hide them, control them. Mm. So, um, actors, that's what we do. We study the human condition. And when I was here, I remember feeling like I had to, um, I, I didn't feel like I belonged too much because all I did was analyze people's mannerisms. And I still do that. Sometimes when I'm in New York visiting my friends, I'll be like, well, why do you cut your hand? You're so awkward. You're uncomfortable in the situation. They'll say, how, do you, how did you know that I was awkward? Like, how do you know that I'm like, really awkward right now? Uh, I, I just don't like people to take pictures of me like I'm cupping my hand because I'm awkward. How did you know that? It's because actors study the, the, the body, the voice, and we have scenes. So, for example, um, I brought you um, an X-Men scene that I was given when I auditioned. And uh, as you can see, it's, it's just, they just give me this. It's just, it's just lines, right? So we have to understand how to bring characters to life. And that's how we learn emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence, I would say, is um, understanding how people interact. And if you are well-versed in emotional intelligence and practice that, you can get things a lot easier. And I'm going to give you a personal example. Um, after is we practice uh, scenes by understanding our objectives. So in every scene, an actor will have an objective, and your your objective is all is always to also win the scene. Um, whomever, whomever your opponent may be, you need to win the scene. And every actor, every character has an objective. Just like in business, everyone wants something from someone else. In every scene, in every act of life, that's how it is. You want something, you're thinking something, there's an objective. There's always an obstacle as well. And being able to de decipher those will help you plan out and map out how you're going to get that. So for example, when you're in, um, I'll give you my example, when I was uh, going through recruitment for consulting, I went to pretty much every firm and um, I knew who would interview me. And I would stalk every single person that I would meet for coffee or have an interview with. I knew their likes and dislikes, I knew if they were adventurous, what countries they'd been to, what languages they spoke, spoke how many daughters or sons they had, because I looked through Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. I knew if they liked insurance, or if they were into digital, what type of digital, is it for banks, what type of you know interest they had. And when they would ask me questions like, tell me a story, or tell me a time that you faced a challenge, or tell me something interesting about yourself, in the typical behavioral interviews that we have, I was able to, to know, what do I want from this person? I want them to like me. When you're going for an interview, that's the goal, right? You want the interviewer to like you, to hire you, or to put in a good word. So um, how do you do that? You tell stories that will appeal to them. That's psychological. We all know that we relate to people that, that are like us, right? So uh, instead of me telling the adventurous um, consultant or partner a story about a time when uh, you know I, I did an internship at X Y company. I would tell them about the time that I interned in BC. Oh, I went to Vancouver, and uh, first of all, I'm not outdoorsy at all, but I did have an internship in Vancouver, and it was a true story. And I told them, yeah, I went to Vancouver. I had a great time. I learned this and this and this. It applies to this company and this position that I'm applying for. And yeah, I just I had a great time as well. Um, I went to Whistler and and skied. It was it was it was also a good time for work life balance. Boom. Got them at Ski Whistler Mountains. No way, oh wow, that's, that's really interesting. Tell me about, oh, how, how was 
the how's the snow in Whistler? It was great. Mm-hmm. Boom, got the guy. He likes me already because I talked about something that he loves, and I know, and I knew that. I knew that because I stalked him, right? And, <laughs> and, that's, and that's part of emotional intelligence. It's, it's understanding who your opponent is. In, in every single life situation, you will have another person, and that is your opponent. It's not an actual opponent; like you're not going to go to war with them. But um, just like actors, business people always deal with other people, right? So. Um, that's a that's a second that's the second lesson for for, for, for what you can learn from actors. Finally, um, improvisation. <laughs> uh, actors are are taught a class called improv. Mm. I-